Hello everyone, welcome to the symposium titled Multisensory Fusion for Assessment and Rehabilitation. I'm Zasundi Pitae. I'm a product research engineer at Bertek Corporation. Now, the symposium has four presentations, including mine, and after that, there's an interactive session with two panel speakers. The theme for that session is from bench to bedside or from lab to clinics. And we want, want all our audience to participate in that discussion. We'll be giving instructions for that later. Uh, it's mainly going to focus on the translatory aspect of the research that we do on our, in our labs or the products that we develop in industry. So now as a product engineer, I develop products that are used in research labs. There are a lot of products currently available in the market. Some of them are in fact developed in labs and I understand that it can be very confusing and very overwhelming to choose the right product or technology for your application. So in my presentation, I'm going to talk about the various technology available that supports multi-sensory fusion and we're going to go through different categories so i'm hoping that will uh that will help you and keep you better informed about what's available and what would best suit your needs before i begin with I, with my slides i do want to mention that i'm employed by Bertek corporation and some of the products that I mentioned in the presentation are manufactured and marketed by Bertech. There are some others which I have used as examples. I have obtained those uh, pictures from research papers. I've cited, uh, I've added references to them. Uh, Bertech does not on endorse any of those products. So to start, um, let's let's start. First, with uh, let's understand what multisensory fusion is. Now, humans use different sensory inputs while maintaining balance and for uh, functional movements. It's like a closed loop feedback control system where you integrate different sources of sensory information. The visual system is responsible to help us with um, direction and action planning. The somatosensory system is the one that tells you where your body is in space. And the vestibular system helps us to interpret rotations, translations, and head movements. Now, these three systems combined with auditory, um, tactile, help us to keep balance and to accomplish our daily life activities. And that's why the term multisensory fusion. Now, though we are always trying to use all the systems, sometimes we have to change their emphasis to accomplish our tasks. For example, if you're walking in a uh, walking on some path and suddenly all the lights turn off, so now you have no visual feedback. So you're going to rely on more on your auditory stimulus, on your tactile stimulus, and this is called a sensory reweighting. It um, also happens due to aging or due to an injury. And that's why it is necessary to study the individual contribution of each of these sensory input and be able to train them. And that is where technology can help us. So let us, let us look at um, each of the technologies in each feedback modality category. Visual system is responsible to help us with direction and action planning and also facilitates movement training. Now the products displaying visual feedback range from large cave environments like these to head mounted displays. Cave environments can be used to cause distractions or perturbations to record subject behavior to such visual changes. For certain populations, these perturbations can be provided in head-mounted displays. Now, a home-based system like this with IMUs transferring data to the computer wirelessly helps subjects receive feedback about their movement so that they can do them as prescribed. Now, visual feedback design can be simple graphs 
or they can be complex scene designs. Uh, complex scenes tend to be more engaging, but you have to be careful that they're not too overwhelming for the subject. But we'll be talking more about this feedback design with Dr. Santos in our last uh, session. Rhythmic auditory training has been shown to be very effective in facilitating movements such as walking in those with neurological disorders like Parkinson's. And it's also useful for learning a novel movement pattern. Auditory feedback can be in form of alarms or sonification. So auditory alarms are used in gait studies like these where force sensing resistors are used in insoles and they give off a beep whenever a heel strike occurs, for example. This alarm is conveyed to the subject using either headphones or speakers. Auditory alarms are also used in exoskeletons if some predefined kinematic angle is exceeded. Another form of uh, feedback is sonification, which is changing magnitude of parameters of sound, such as volume, pitch, stereo balance, timber over time. Uh, this in the past has been used for upper extremity training, where each of these parameters are associated with one plane. And so in this way, you can do multidimensional training. A somatosensory is the stimulation felt by skin, either due to vibration or pressure. In souls like these can improve spatiotemporal uh, parameters of gait by de delivering vibratory stimulation using piezoelectric actuators. So matter-sensory or proprioception also tells us about the position and movement of our body parts without actually looking at them. For example, when I'm dancing, when I'm placing my foot, when I'm moving my hands around, I can do all these things without actually looking at where I'm placing my foot or where I'm moving my hand. This proprioception plays a very important role in balance and to assess the contribution of uh, proprioception, a subject is asked to stand on a moving base like this and then the effect of that is recorded on postural sway. By perturbing the base, you are challenging the somatosensory input. So this was an overview of how different technology can be categorized as different feedback modalities. Another way of categorizing these products is based on the information that the user receives while using them, <clears throat> either knowledge of results or as knowledge of performance. My goal now again here in going through these different categories and explaining like the products or technology used um, based on the way that they can be classified is hoping that this makes it easier uh, for you all to make decisions when you have to choose what to use for your study. Now, both the, of these uh, examples, they are tele-rehabilitation um, apps used by uh, patients for prescribed movements at home. This one over here is an example of knowledge of results because it, gives you information regarding the, out, uh, regarding the outcome in form of number of rep repetitions, durations, so it's number of lunges, lunge duration. Whereas this app over here tells you about the arm extension. So it is an example of knowledge of performance. You get details about the movement and technique. Products can also be categorized as those giving real-time or terminal feedback. Now, systems like these give real-time feedback to the subject about movement. Over here, the visual feedback is almost mirroring the subject's movement. It guides the subject through the task and is very effective in the early learning phase. Now, often during a protocol, what re researchers uh, do is they fade out this real-time feedback and slowly start replacing it by terminal feedback. That is giving user information about the movement after the task is completed, either in the form of verbal feedback or in the form of reports, assessments. But this reduces the dependency on feedback and allows retention. 
Yet another way of looking at the products is the ones that are used in clinics uh, and labs like these or the ones that are used at home such as instrumented crutches. The ones used in clinics such as this computerized dynamic posturography system are of course not feasible for home use due to their price point or size but these devices offer multimodal feedback modularity in designing your own protocol so um, due to the flexibility for a lab it can actually prove to be cost effective with that i come to the end of my presentation and i hope i have not confused you uh, <clears throat> by the like so many giving you so many options that are available I agree there are a lot of products available and it's difficult to choose. The optimum technology will be something that's best suited for your study, subject population, how many, how much funds you have. Do you want to do the study inside the lab or outside on field or at home? Uh, and even when you select something, what is the optimum dosage? Like, how much feedback is good feedback and not overwhelming for the subject? Our patients. So we are going to discuss this in more detail with Dr. Vardhan Chaudhary in the last interactive session. Um, at this time, I'll be taking a few questions. Please type your questions in the chat window. If not, my email ID is also listed here. If you think like um, I did not include some cool product or that you use in your lab as examples in my presentation, I would definitely like to hear about them. So please do write to me and thank you. Thank you for listening.